Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to the third episode of From Sad to Chad. Now, this episode, it's going to be a bit of a longer one, as uh, there seems that the jump in currency from the first episode to the second episode left a lot of people kind of wondering how that happened. So I'm going to go in a little bit more details on the strategy, the farming strategy, as well as, uh, you know, the reason why I made the choices that I made. And then, of course, later on, I'll talk about how we actually went ahead and made the currency that we made, as we've generated a little over 100 exalts or so over the past 15 hours of gameplay, which is pretty good considering what we are starting with and also considering our build. Now, to be fair, I got pretty, pretty lucky during the, uh, the entirety of this challenge so far, but that's okay because this is only a first portion of the challenge. We are only going to keep going and pushing for more currency and for more returns. Okay. So let's talk about the actual farming strategy. Now I went over it in the first video, but I do want to give a little bit uh, more context as a lot of people seem to be puzzled by it okay a lot of your money from this strategy comes from the grand design uh with the uh, expedition this is going to be your main money maker as well as altars that's going to be your second money maker the rest is basically just there to help provide you with you know free goodies as well as map sustain for example we are using a rusted harbinger a rusted metamorph and a rusted expedition scarab which is worth about seven chaos we are uh, total we're using the Fortune Favors the Brave for 3 Chaos, and we're running the City Square map, which we can be bought pretty easily for 5 Chaos in bulk. We're basically investing 15 Chaos per map. That's the entirety of our investment. It's very cheap. There's no Sextants. There's no Delhi Orbs. There's nothing crazy like that. 15 Chaos per map. Okay. So, what are we getting to make back that 15 Chaos per map? Well... First off, we can look at, of course, essences. Now, I've yet to sell any essence. I've used some for my own little crafting a little bit, but I've yet to really sell any essences that I've gotten from this uh, challenge so far. So as you can see, I've gotten a, you know, a few of the you know, special essences. Uh, so, you know, there's probably over an X just in these special essences, and there's easily a couple exalt for the rest of the essences. If I was to basically put them as shrieking, this is how you want to sell your essences. Uh, you want to sell all essences in Shrieking for basically one to each. And the good essences, such as, for example, Sorrow, Spite, Scorn, uh, Rage, stuff like that, you want to make those into Deafening and sell them in Exalt Ratios. That's going to give you the best value for your actual time. That is probably going to benefit... That's probably going to give you, on average, somewhere around 5 to 10 C per map. And remember, we're investing 15 C. The cool thing about the essences, too, is that they're free. We're literally not paying for essences at all. Right, we're only getting the free essence per map, and on average, it's probably about 5C. Now, of course, most of the time it's going to be a lot less than that, but because sometimes you're going to get these big essences, it adds up to probably about 5 to 10C per map. So that's, that's the first thing that we're doing. Next, we're also doing the Strongbox with the uh, Secret Operations uh, for the Operative Strongbox, of course, and the Corrupted uh, and Rare, so we don't have to roll them ourselves. Now, this is another thing which we're investing literally zero currency into. We're just getting the maps of the nodes on the map. And as you can see, if you look at my fragment tab, most of these scarabs that are not the rusted expedition and uh, metamorph and harbinger that I've purchased, pretty much every single other scarab has been gotten from these operative strong boxes. Now, again, there's not a million of them, but there's a decent chunk. There's probably a couple exalts in there as well. And remember, I've only played for 15 hours total. Uh, and a lot of that is very inefficient as my character is simply not that good to actually farm the content that I'm farming as it's a bossing character, not a mapping character. And it's extremely scuffed on the budget. But it can still do it. And that's kind of where, you know, we've made a decent bit of money there. And of course, when we encounter, uh, for example, Harvest, we can get these uh, these yellow plants that give us the opportunity to uh, upgrade a scarab. So I'm, I've been using Rusted Divination, trying to make them into Wing Divination. I've succeeded once so far out of two attempts, I believe. But, you know, this is a jump from basically 3C to 75C or whatever, right? It's almost half an X from a single click in Harvest as long as, you know, it goes through. Most of the time, again, though, it well, not most of the time, but it's I'm not sure what the actual odds are. Uh, but, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at with that. But, you know, that's a little bit of extra currency that we're not spending anything to actually get. Now, next, we're also getting Harbinger. Now, Harbinger, we're spending 2C to actually get on the, uh, as we're using a rested Harbinger Scarab, and we're getting the nodes on the actual Atlas itself. So we're spending a little bit, and to be honest, Harbinger does not actually return that much in terms of pure currency. Now, over, I believe I haven't sold any, but over the course of my 15 hours, I've made 
uh, you know, eight ancient, uh, ancient orbs, which seems that right now it's about, let's see, um, 15 per X. So that's like half an X. So again, you know, we're not investing a whole lot, but we're, we're getting some out of it back. We're, we've also made some annuls, but I've used some, uh, of course, some, some exalt shards, which have probably amounted to an exalt or two over the course of those 15 hours of gameplay. Um, you know, it's little things, but the main reason why we actually end up using the Harbinger uh, Scarab for us is for map sustain. It helps us quite a bit with sustaining our map. It's still not great, and I still have not been able to sustain my own maps. That's mostly due to the fact that I'm using Singular Focus. I could easily drop that, and it would probably be much easier to sustain given my current investment in my maps. Okay, same thing with the uh, Smuggler's Cash, right? The high stuff, uh, you know, it's not going to make you rich, but you're investing literally nothing, and it's adding up over time. You know, we've gotten uh, some blueprints here, so I'm not sure what these are. I've yet to sell any of this stuff. Right, it doesn't seem like any of my blueprints are worth anything, but I'm sure there's some deception contracts in there, maybe some lockpicking, you know, probably half an X to an X worth of, of, of stuff in there. And, and, you know, that was free, right? We're not investing anything into it. But, of course, none of those mechanics are actually the main moneymaker. The main moneymaker, there's two of them. First one is Expedition. Any logbook sells for 25C. If there's Black Scythe on there, it's 45C. And if there are Knights of the Black Sun, it's 75C. You're probably going to get Blueprint every two to three maps. If you're clearing the maps very quickly and say the third to four minute mark, that means that you're getting quite a few Blueprints per hour. If you're like me and you're clearing the map in like eight minutes, that means that you're probably getting about two Blueprints per hour, which is not great. But that's just, you know, the name of the game. You're playing a character which is not made to run that sort of content. It is what it is. But that's kind of where we're at in terms of Blueprints. Now, of course, the reroll currencies are also a large portion of the money. So what I do is I sell them in bulk for exalts. So I believe it's 40 exotic coinages uh, for an exalt. You, you'll get about, you know, these are about 40 each. So if you sell them 40 for an exalt, it means that you're, you know, you're getting a little bit of extra value because exalts are about 120 or 180. So you're making that 20C profit. I sell these instead of for 7C each for uh, 20 Per, uh, 22 I think is what I sold them per exalt uh, so again you're going to get a little bit more extra value there instead of selling them in chaos uh, scrap metals I use myself for raw crafting uh, and uh, astragalis uh, I sell them in uh, in chaos because I'm kind of lazy and they sell very very quickly so that's kind of the breakdown on the money and of course a lot of the money is also going to come from altars right we were running the shadow of hunger with etched by acid alongside the eldritch gaze and wrath of the cosmos and this has given us, you know, a decent chunk of these Eldritch Currencies, which I have been selling. I've sold hundreds of them already. A single map can sometimes give you upwards of 30 of these actual Eldritch uh, Grand Currencies. It's pretty insane considering they're about 3C each, right? So you can walk out of a map with nearly, you know, um, half an exalt worth of these Eldritch Currencies. And again, if you're running these maps very quickly, it's going to add up very, very fast. So people who have really good mapping builds... You should definitely be looking forward to something uh, to doing something like that. But that's essentially how I've been going about both selling my stuff and kind of the breakdown of the loot. Now, personally, I've been making about 2.5 to 3x an hour from the actual farming because, again, I'm not very efficient with it. Uh, and I'm also sometimes, you know, uh, six portaling maps as I'm trying to put the uh, Pandemonium Sentinel on my expedition. And it makes things really scary, especially with Wrath of the Cosmos. Uh, Cosmos, it, it can get pretty nutty. Uh, so that's kind of why, um, you know, I'm struggling a little bit, but that's okay because for me, that's, you know, about half of the actual currency that I'm, that I'm going to be making is from the farming. If we look at it so far, I've been making about 3x an hour, play about, you know, 15 hours. That's roughly 45x and I've made over 100. So more than half of the money that I've made so far has not been from actual, from the actual farming. It's been from taking the things that I'm farming and making them into more currency. Okay, let's talk about some of that. Okay, a lot of people have been questioning me about these bases. Why am I picking them up? Well, first off, they were selling. Now, they haven't really been selling too, too well. I've been able to still sell the Imperial Claws for about 3C each, but no luck on the Imbued Wands ever since yesterday's video. Uh, I started trying it out uh, to pick up different bases to see if those would sell, uh, but item level seems to matter a little bit more. These don't really matter. When it comes to these, people are really only looking for 85 and above. I mean, sometimes 86. Um... But I do think that if you're farming zones where you could drop a lot of 85 items, it's not a bad idea to add a pure, like good pure evasion bases and good pure ES bases to your filters. Evasion bases are extremely helpful because or useful because of spell suppression, such as you know, sling gloves, stuff like that. And of course, ES boots 
uh, are useful because people are recombinating them in order to get the damage per intelligence. Uh, sword gloves are really good because people need them for in-stacking. People are recombinating them by using essences on them, so they're very popular as well. But they do need to be item level 85, so all my 83s and 84s don't seem to really be selling. 85s, however, do seem to sell pretty okay. All right, now, what about the rings? Why do I have so many rings in a 3C dump tab? They don't actually really sell. The only ones that actually sell for 3C is amethyst or unset rings. Those actually sell in bulk for 3C each. Um, but, you know, all of the lesser bases, you know, sapphire or two stone rings, all that, that's not actually going to sell for 3C. That I've actually been using myself uh, for recombinating. So let me give you guys a bit of a rundown on why recombinating rings is very lucrative. So there's three different things that you can get from the Sentinel modifiers when recombinating two white rings. It's very important that they're white because you want the result to be blue, nothing else. All right. There's a one in 45 chance or so. Uh, and this is from a sample size of, of thousands of recombinators, thanks to Mr. James Belton. Uh, one in 45 that you'll end up with a charge on your ring. Plus one frenzy, endurance, or power. One in 45, and there's three charges, which means every 135 recombinators, you're going to end up with one of each of the three charges. And this is, of course, an average, right? This is how we do things. We always look at averages. Now, a power charge goes for about 10 exalts. A frenzy charge goes for about four exalts. And a endurance, we're just going to consider, is worth nothing. So that's 14 exalts, which is right now, at current prices, about 2,520 chaos. Now, 135 recombinators at 10 C each is roughly 1,350 chaos. And of course, the rings, we are going to be sacrificing half of them, and they're about one chaos each in bulk, which means another 135 chaos that we're going to be sacrificing, which means our total investment is 1,485, and the return is this, which means that every time that we recomb recombinate 135 recombinators, re jewelry recombinators, or 270 rings, we'll get back 1,035 chaos profit if we divide that by 135 recombinators it means that on average every time that you recombinate two white rings you're going to profit 7.6 chaos that's a lot of money and that's what i've been doing a little bit as you can see i have a plus one power charge ring here now to be fair i got pretty lucky uh, i bought two exalt worth of recombinators or jewelry recombinators and then i got a plus one power charge i sold that for 11 exalt because it was one uh, one of the better bases now 10 exalt will sell on any base pretty much or 9.5 10 exalt will sell on any base uh, but if you get it on say a better base like an amethyst ring uh, a steel ring an opal ring something like that they actually sell for like 11 exalts instead um, which is what I had on my first one I think it was an amethyst ring but this one's an, a sapphire ring which is worth 10x now I've sold this many times already except uh, I was AFK so I didn't actually get to sell it uh, but uh, yeah they do sell for 10x um, so you know 7.6 chaos for basically two clicks in a recombinator pretty insane how much money you can make with this now this one i actually self farmed so i used my own recombinators and my own rings of course i've been using my own rings the whole time to make this one and i actually hid this and again i've been pretty pretty lucky so far from in this uh, from sad to chat series but i hit this in like five or ten recombinators something like that i just had a few laying around and i actually hit it i was like okay i guess that's cool uh so that's you know an extra 10x to the actual um the actual project but again, it doesn't matter if you get lucky or not. At the end of the day, it's all about the average. And the average says that it's a 7.6 chaos profit per recombinator, which is pretty insane, especially if you're self-farming the rings so you don't have to go out and buy them. And the recombinators, you could also self-farm if you wanted to. Now, looking at the rest uh, of the actual, uh, the, uh, the rest of the money that we made. So we're sitting at 83.9 exalt on excellence. Of course, a lot of that is going to be those those pure exalts that I have here, and I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, but some of it is going to be just other random things. I have a lot of chaos. Now, this chaos mostly comes from selling these 3C bases. You know, they add up pretty quickly. Someone will message you, oh, I want a, an imbued wand. I'll take 10 of them. That's 30C, right? So it adds up pretty quickly. Uh, so that's where most of my chaos comes from. I've got uh, almost an X in stacked X, almost an X in divines. I've got, uh, you know, a little bit in these different scarabs, these different essences, stuff like that. Uh, and then there's not a whole lot of like fluff in there, uh, but there's probably a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so, so far we're sitting at about 82X and we have the 10X ring right there. So that puts us at about 92. And then we also have this quiver, uh, at, which I, I actually thought would sell for around the 22 to 24 exalt mark, but I've had no luck selling it so far, uh, even while I was AFK. So I decided to lower it to 18. Now I'm guessing it's going to sell very soon as it's actually a really good quiver. 
and I'll talk about how that was made in a minute. Um, because it, I've basically been paying attention to all the drops that I've been getting from like my expeditions and stuff like that. Like whenever I drop a, a fractured base, uh, which is good, I try to basically go further with it to make more currency out of it. Uh, and I'll talk about the ring that I had yesterday that I ended up recrafting. Uh, for those who saw yesterday's episode, I had a steel ring, uh, which was, I think, priced at 8, eight exalt or something. It was T2 intelligence and T1 perfectly rolled physical damage to attacks. Uh, which I hadn't crafted, but it didn't sell. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just craft it, and I'll show you guys. I'll, I'll show you guys. Show you guys what what that ended up making. Um, yeah. So 18x for that, 10x for that. Uh, now these are again pretty low prices, but I'm expecting this to sell. I, I'd I'd accept like an 8x offer just because I'd be done with the headhunter, and then I could move on to the next portion of the project. Uh, and then this quiver, you know, 18x, like I said, is a pretty decent price for a T1 multi plus one arrow, attack speed, damage with bows, lightning to attack quiver. It's just unfortunate because it's a really bad base. Vile arrow quiver sucks uh, for elemental. If this was for a physical build, it would be pretty okay, uh, like a fizz convert. But because it's for elemental, uh, the implicit is essentially completely useless. Uh, so that's why it's been a little bit harder to sell it, despite the fact that it's actually a pretty good quiver. It's only about 4% less damage than a 50 exalt quiver. Uh, on POB. So yeah. Anyways, let's talk about that ring from yesterday, shall we? So this is what that ring ended up looking like. So I was basically uh, not selling the ring and I got to the point where I was like, well, you know, what? I'm just going to try to craft it. So I bought some essences of scorn, uh, deafening essences of scorn for the global multi. It's the only way to do that. And then I spammed some and I got pretty lucky. I hit about a one in 500 plus essences, which is T1 chaos res. And that made me very happy because Chaos Res is very hard to get on this on the builds that utilize this ring. Uh, most of them struggle to get a lot of Chaos Res, and this is basically perfect. Intelligence is super hard to get. They're in-starved. They're Chaos Res starved. Of course, the amount of damage that you get from the multi and the flat fizz is amazing. And of course, we uh, unveiled the life by crafting suffixes cannot be changed, hitting it with a veiled Chaos Orb, crafting mana as a block, and then unveiling the life. This costs two exalt, but it guarantees a life roll. Just about guarantees, not quite. And then, of course, we crafted the non-channeling, which could also be channeling mana cost, uh, which would be good for Cyclone. This is good for General Cry. I actually POB'd this ring, and compared to my actual multiple mirror build from a few leagues ago on my General Cry build that I ended up selling for, I believe, eight mirrors, this actually 6% more damage and also gave me more intelligence and more chaos res. This ring is just nutty, like absolutely nutty. Uh, so I ended up selling that for 28 results. I had it priced at 32. Some guy offered 28. I said, you know what? You can have it. I'm okay with that. It's not exactly a meta build. It's not exactly a meta ring. So I, I was glad that I uh, that someone actually offered the 28. Um, so that's kind of how we ended up selling that. Now, if you remember about this ring, we basically dropped this base here, the perfect fist to attacks on a uh, coal ring. And then I bought a 30C steel ring. And then we recombinated that, hit the steel ring with the double, and then we used maybe an X or two worth of uh, Essence of Scorn, got the T1 Chaos Res, 2X worth for uh, to unveil the life, and then I crafted the, the non-channeling. So that entire ring probably cost me less than 5X to make, and it sold for 28. That's pretty good, right? We more than quadrupled our money there. Uh, this quiver... Let's talk about that in a bit, uh, a, a little bit. I actually dropped a quiver, which was a... A uh, really bad base. I think it was a life uh, life uh, for each enemy hit gained or something like that. With the T1 Critical Strike Multiplier with bows uh, fractured on it. This was from an Expedition drop. So I bought another Quiver, which was actually a good base, which was a Arrowhead qu or Broadhead Quiver, which is uh, attack speed implicit. And I recombinated that uh, with the Fractured Life and the Fractured Multi. And I hit the bad base, unfortunately. But I did keep both my actual uh, Fractures. So I got T1 Life. And T1 multi, which kind of just makes it very easy to craft, as I was able to just spam some very cheap essences of torment for the flat lightning to attacks until I got the plus one arrow. Now I got super lucky. I actually wasn't trying to do that. I was trying to just recombinate again on a good base, but I hit the plus one arrow, so I kept it. And then because arrow has a uh, an attack tag and so does lightning damage to attacks, I crafted cannot roll attack mods and I slammed an exalt, which guarantees damage per bows or damage with bows. It's absolutely guaranteed. So I did that, I hit the absolute lowest tier, so I annulled it. I hit the cannot roll attack mods, which is one exalt craft a few times, which is very unfortunate. And then I hit it again with an exalt. I had T4, I annulled it off, 
I hit T4 again and I decided, you know what, I'm done wasting currency on a quiver, which is probably not even going to sell for that much. So I think the total investment in this quiver was around the 6 or 7x. So even if it only sold for 15, I would actually be pretty happy with it overall as it would be doubling my money. This is where, as yesterday's episode was entitled, Knowledge is Power. That's pretty much how we've amassed roughly 100 exalt or so over the 15 hours of playtime. Now, I do want to say that if it wasn't for recombinators and sentinels, a lot of this stuff would be impossible, right? A lot of this, uh, these sort of massive money makers strategies this league are revolving around the fact that you can craft some insane items for extremely cheap just with a little bit of luck. And if you don't get lucky, you don't actually end up losing much. Like these quivers, the fractured life or the fractured multi quivers are very, very cheap. Uh, so even if we actually get unlucky and we just lose the entire thing, we're, we're putting very little into it and it's got potential for very big rewards, such as that ring, right? If we look at that ring, drop this myself, paid 30 C for the base. When I recombinated it, even if it went to complete, like just death, right? And it just died on me. I would have lost not even half an X because the, the, ba the, the physical damage to attacks fracture was only worth about 30 to 50 C. So it was very little, and then what I got out of it was huge. So it's very important that you pay attention to those bases. But that's essentially kind of what I've been doing. Now, the ring recombinating, I think, is probably the easiest way of making currency in the league right now. The only issue is you need to have a little bit of currency to uh, weather, weather the bad luck, right? You could easily go through 100 recombinators and not get a power charge ring, just like you could get three or four in 100 recombinators. There's RNG there, and you never know what you're going to get. So I'd highly recommend if you are going to go into the strategy, you probably want to make sure that you have, you know, a decent chunk of currency laying around, maybe at least, you know, 10 to 20 X laying around so that if you do get unlucky, you're not going to just, you know, lose it all and then just, you know, basically quit the league. Um, but on average, seven chaos profit per recombinator, which is pretty insane for the effort that goes into it. That's pretty much it for the third episode of From Sad to Chad. Now, I didn't upgrade the, the build whatsoever yesterday. In the uh, the next video, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have the head on her as, you know, we have yet to liquidate pretty much anything. Uh, so we'll definitely have our head on her. Now, we're probably going to respec into another 10 or 20x build, which is going to be a lot better for farming maps so that we can start making a lot more currency, more, uh, I guess you could say more consistently, that won't require the sort of RNG that I've been taken advantage of uh, and been really lucky uh, for the recombinating of my crafting stuff. Uh, so hopefully we go into the 6 to 7x an hour as we uh, re-roll into a build which is going to farm these maps much, much more effectively. Anyways, before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to my supporters. So Jaden and Rocky, Max, Solomon, Exo, Mistress, Coral, Thomas, Mass, Snake, The Great Master, Alex, Tim, Mercury, Burt, Kai, Nailed, Jarvis, Jobit, Bittison, Vaith, Talismar, Ando, Drago, 99, and Sins Eater, as well as anybody else who supported me in the past and anyone else who wishes to remain anonymous. Now, again, I do want to say um, that I really, really appreciate the support, and hopefully this series has been helpful to you guys. Hopefully this clears out some of the misunderstandings from episode one to two. If you still have any question regarding the strategy or revolving, uh, re re revolving around how to actually, you know, sell your stuff and whatnot, uh, how to unload, if you will, uh, feel free to you know, leave a comment and I'll try to, I'll try my best to answer. Anyways, that'll be Matthew signing out until the next one. Peace.